So, um, my name is Diane Walton. Nobody calls me Diane. I go by Dizzy. I haven't had a name change. It's just a name. Um, I'm a lawyer in Asheville. I do family law. Um, we are having a name change clinic, and the fact that I'm a lawyer and we're having this clinic does not create attorney-client relationship between us, um, and we don't have attorney-client privilege, and um, I guess that's enough said about that. Um, so what, what our goal here today is to actually walk people through a name change so that it's possible that you could go file this name change um, once you have everything kind of gathered together. Um, if you have your cell phone on, can you go ahead and turn it down or off or whatever? Because I find it, I'm just easily distracted. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about adult name changes, but minors can change their names too. Is there anybody here who's interested in learning about a minor name change? Is that an issue today? Okay. Um, so I'm going to focus on the adult name change, but the resources for minor name changes, because I've met with quite a few 16 and 17 year olds um, who would like to change their names. So if you know someone in that position, um, the website that I'm going to send you to to get the adult name change packet um, is available for uh, minors. If they're 15 or under, um, they really, they need their parents, uh, they need more of their parents' assistance. All right. Okay. So a name change. A name change is changing your legal name. And the ultimate um, ramification is that your birth certificate is changed. And you change your name on your license and all your legal documents, social security. And stuff. <laughs> so um, in North Carolina, a new birth certificate is issued. Whereas in some states, an amended birth certificate is issued, and it, it's like a uh, staple to it. But in North Carolina, if you were born in North Carolina, a new birth certificate will issue. If you were born somewhere else, um, we'll get to that. You, you change your name in the state where you reside, not where you were born. So you, if you've lived in North Carolina for six months, you can file a name change. That gives you enough authority to do it here. And then ultimately the end order would be sent to your home state for the, for the change. However, your home state handles that change. Okay, so first things first, there's two websites that are extremely helpful. One is the Campaign for Southern Equalities LGBTQ Toolkit. What is it called? LGBTRightsToolkit.org. Okay, that has all the southern states and how to change your name and has good links. So that's helpful. In conjunction, Buncombe County is the 28th judicial district. So North Carolina is broken up into districts. If, the, if it's a low population, you know, five counties might make up one district. Buncombe County is a large enough population that we're our own district. We're the 28th judicial district. On our website, the 28th Judicial District Bar. Do we have that? It's um, 28thjdb.com. So 28thjdb.com. <coughs> On that website, you'll find this pro, it's called the Pro Se Packet. Pro Se is Latin, or I don't know. Really, the direct translation, I don't know, but it means you're representing yourself. You don't have a lawyer. These are, there's some things you can do in North Carolina without a lawyer. So there's pro se packets. Pro se is P-R-O space S-E. So you'll see that on the website. And then you'll see the name changes, either for a minor or an adult. So those are two really good resources. I think that working in conjunction, you can do it on your own without a lawyer. Um, Okay, so first things first. What North Carolina's process is a little bit complicated and it's a little bit dated. 
So in this packet, there is a checklist, okay? So I'm gonna just talk about all these forms, and I have a lot of them here. But everything you need is on that 28th Judicial District Bar website. And actually, we have, don't we have these here? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so in a minute, we'll hand those out. So what do you do first? First, we dial up our time machine, and we go back in time before there were computers. And we post the notice on the courthouse door that we're changing our name because our creditors need to know this. And we all know that Bank of America is going to go down and, and check and see if we've been paying our credit card. Sorry to be so facetious. This is like really dated, but we have to do it. So the notice, um, Fletcher, you can do that. Okay, so let's give everybody a notice, okay? And this is step one, Daisy? Step one, file notice. This has to be posted on the courthouse door for 10 days. So you get out your, um, what are those guys called, those iron workers? Those old timey, anyways, you get out your old timey hammer and you hammer it into the courthouse door. No, what you really do is every courthouse in every county of North Carolina near the courthouse door will have a big bulletin board, usually encased in glass. When you open the bulletin board, there's usually one to two thumbtacks per 100 pieces of paper. So you steal the other person's thumbtack and you stick in your notice. That's posting it on the courthouse door. The clerk will look for the thumbtack puncture. So feel free to bring your own. Okay. The other thing I've learned the hard way is that I post two and I immediately take one back with me because sometimes when someone steals your thumbtack, your notice goes missing. And so you're, you want to have two with the thumbtack puncture. Okay, does everybody have one yet? Then we're going to walk through. Yes. Are they dated by any sort of court or something like that? Can somebody date them that you put yeah. up? Yeah. You, what you're going to do is, um, so at the clerk's office, and I'm just going to talk about Buncombe County, but every clerk's office is like this. The clerk's office is almost always, uh, it's just, it's always at the courthouse. Okay. You're going to go to the clerk's office and they, you will, Asked to go to the clerk of court because there will be lots of things in the courthouse. So you go to the clerk. And if you wonder, if you can't remember what to do, it's right there before the clerk. Okay, it's on the form. You go to the clerk, they'll have a machine, and you're saying, I need to clock it in. And you go, whack, whack. It makes this big noise and it puts a date on it. Um, and clock it in, go back and retrieve it after 10 days. Okay, step one. Actually, let's back it up. I recommend to my clients that before they do anything, they go ahead and get the two background checks, okay? So you have to have a, a state, an SBI and an FBI background check. We have fingerprints here for you guys to do. Um, and the websites have links directly to the information for the FBI and SBI. So those two websites I gave you, you can click, go straight to where you need to go. Um, does that cost 30 bucks? Uh, $10. $10. $10 for each one? $10 for the prints and then $18 for the FBI. Right? Well, okay. And you get five set of prints with your, your thing. Okay. Um, pass those around for first of all. The cards? Mm -hmm. so, groups? Um, okay. Thanks. So that can take a while. So that's the first thing you do. Like, if you're doing this, do it today. It's like, let's just knock this out. Um, the state background is fourteen dollars. Okay. Thanks. So total, it's about thirty something, forty total. Yes. Because you're telling the truth on this affidavit. Okay. You have, you're swearing to tell the truth. It's like, I got my license. No, once the day you moved here, okay. they don't care about it. It's the day you moved to North Carolina starts your six months ticket. How far ahead can you get in the background check and all that done? Now. 
it's when yeah, you're clocking it. something in that you need to have been here for six months. <coughs> Fingerprints are good for six months, so you want to make sure you're timing it. Yeah, and I, I really, because it takes a while, like for me, when I go to the clerk, I want everything in a packet, and I'm just like, I'm done, here it all is. You're not filing something and three months later giving them your background check. So get that background check. The background checks come in, file your notice. Okay, so now we're back on track with our paperwork. So, um, okay, so it says, in the matter of the change of name, and I'll just use me as an example. My current name is Diane Esther Walton. So I'd write what's on my birth certificate right there. <coughs> Two, the name I want, Daisy Esther Walton. So whatever you're changing it to, whatever you want your new birth certificate to be, that's what you would write right there. Yes. So question, I'm legally married. Mm -hmm. So I had changed my name when I got married. I have to name, took my spouse's name. So I gotta put my birth name only on this Well, thing? you're gonna pull your birth certificate. <laughs> In North Carolina, your birth certificate needs to have been pulled within the last 12 months of filing this. Look at your birth certificate, because a hyphen is a curious thing. So when you get married, you can take your spouse's name, no problem. You just take your marriage certificate, you go to Social Security, right. you go to the DMV, but they don't hyphenate. <clears throat> to hyphenate, you have to go through this process. So if it's an actual hyphen, you just want to pull your birth certificate and look at it. Does that make sense? I don't Okay. In order to add my married name, what's the birth certificate? Are you wanting to make your, are you wanting your married name on your birth certificate? I hadn't thought about that. Didn't know it was possible. Generally, so it's two different processes. And this is a good question because I get it a lot. You don't need to go through this process if you're assuming a married name. No, that, that, that's the right. first thing for, for name change itself. But if you were to put your married name on here, it's going to appear on your birth certificate and okay. you're stuck. And if you were ever to not be married anymore, that's still your name. It's not going to go away with a divorce because you went through this process. Okay. Okay. All right. Sorry. Um, I think the rest is kind of self explanatory because it has mm. the little descriptions underneath here. You can, um, with, the, with the married thing, I would think that if you want to throw in the married name, I, I think it's okay to just not do the married name. Then, yeah, so go with the birth certificate. Yeah, just go the birth certificate name. But it, yeah, and then you're, you're, married, you're, right? you still have your married name. Because mm -hmm. everything's been changed over past social security, everything's been, also been changed years ago. Um, yeah, when we're done, all of that's going to change. Yeah, you know, everything is going to change. Yeah, I'm saying I, my passport, driver's license, social security card, I have my married name on them now. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a gender change, so with that, so I have to put. Are you doing the gender change at the same time? Yes. Okay, that's a super specific question, and I'm going to get back to it. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to not answer that question, but let me kind of work through this, and then we can have a conversation. Okay, okay. you had a question? Yeah. Um, do you have to do this in the county that you have the three years? Yes. Okay. But this is good. I mean, you can just white out bunk them. I think we got one more question in the back. Okay, yes. Um, I was born in California, mm -hmm. and I'm a resident here. I'm going to be in California for two weeks pretty soon. I was just wondering about the birth certificate and who has jurisdiction. North Carolina has jurisdiction. You live here. You're just visiting. So you file it here, and then when you get your court orders, then you communicate with California about changing your birth certificate. They're just like the last step of changing the birth certificate. But while you're there, you could pick up a birth certificate. It might be a lot easier to get one, because you have to have one. You have to have retrieved your birth certificate within the last 12 months. They won't take a dog year. 30 year old birth certificate. They want one that you just got from wherever you live in. So, there's different requirements for the gender marker change to have to follow the North Carolina requirements? You, you know, for the gender marker change, you're going to look at California and you'll follow. I now see why it's confusing. 
you you follow the California law. But if California law says, and I don't know what California law says, but I've dealt with this a lot. So the out of state says you have to have a court order saying that the gender marker is changed. If it requires a court order, you'd get that here in front of our clerk and then send it to California and say here, you get, okay, yeah. So they just work straight in California for the gender marker. Okay, can we move on from notice? You good with that? Post it on the courthouse door. It's ridiculous. Okay. But it's fundamentally all what the name change is about. The name change is about, for, from the government's point of view, somebody not committing fraud. They want to prevent fraud and avoiding from predators and tax liens and child support and criminal ramifications of things. So that's why we do that. And that's like, yeah, that's kind of consistent throughout this process is the clerk like, hey, why are you doing this? They're not being nosy. They want to know it's for non-fraudulent reasons. And then we could go on and on and talk about all the fraudulent reasons I've seen in my career in actual real life. Okay, so now I guess we go on to petition. petition. So Fletch is going to hand out the petitions. And can I have one? Thank you. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, is everyone ready? So where it says file number at the very top and it's blank, the clerk, when you file your packet, She's going to take this big stamp and go whack, whack, and give you a file number. So don't worry about that. And when you post your notice, you won't have a file number yet. Don't worry about that. Um, but when you give it to the clerk as part of your packet, the clerk will go through and stamp it with a file number. Okay, so this is your actual petition. And all the questions on here are just following along with what the statute requires. So this is what North Carolina requires. So again, you put the same heading that you put on your notice. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory until you get to number three. Number three is why are you doing this? It needs to be for good and sufficient reason. So I've had a, a number of people do this on their own and then the clerk requires a hearing because this is something the clerk does not have to have a hearing. The clerk can just, boom, sign it, you're good to go. And you just get notice of it, that it's been done. But why was she having hearings? So I asked her, because she's like super friendly to our community. Um, and so I wanted to, I just wanted to see what was going on. And so this is, this is what she said to me. Um, I often have hearings on trans name changes. The number one reason is that the reason given on the petition is vague or not clear. So I think a lot of people feel kind of protective of their story and what's going on with them or they're fearful of how the clerk might react and they're kind of vague. So that doesn't work for her. So here are things that work for her. So she says the, the ones that don't work. I get reasons like personal reasons or better to express who I am. What works for her is if someone says, I identify with another gender. Like you're just super honest with her. I have used another name for X amount of time. Everybody knows me by this name. My coworkers, you know, my family. These are independent answers, by the way. You can use them all. Yes. If you're going to say something like that, is it part of your affidavit from other, I don't know. Um, the affidavit's a good character. We'll get yeah, there. Well, they, you know, okay, yeah, on. we'll get there. Um, so another one is I've been taking hormones under doctor's care. Or I've had surgery. Um, she's She finds it helpful that if you're doing hormones or under doctor's care, if there's a, a letter attached to that effect. 
And then this is all about not having a hearing because hearings cause people anxiety, whether it needs to or not. So yes. You mentioned um, if you are medically transitioning, have a letter to that effect. What if you, like I'm gender queer, I'm not medically transitioning yeah, you don't have at all. To. But if I put in a reason, changing my name because I'm a different gender. Yeah. She okay. doesn't, that, she's fine okay. with that answer right there. Okay. These are like independent. It's not that these answers have to be all glommed on. Okay. It's just personal reasons isn't enough. Okay. And so she's just saying, these are some things that I found enough that I didn't require hearing okay. when they said, you know, hey, I identify as another gender and this name isn't working for me. Okay. Or I've used this name because I identify as a different gender and everybody knows me as, like, I've done this for a while. That works for her. Different reason, hormone surgery, yes. Going back to the easier question number one, um, if you weren't born in the United States, can you amend this form to account for that? Or if, if, you born, they won't yeah. if you weren't born, yeah. If you weren't born in the United States, you should hire a lawyer. Really, this is not a that is not a pro se name change. That is now you need to hire Megan Burke, who's done these and gone like she's had to work with different countries, and it's it's it is doable. You can get it done, but it's very, it's it's a it's a lengthy and twisted road, not one that someone who's pro se is well equipped to handle. So just a simple follow up yes. to that: if the name change is granted in that context, does it then automatically change that person's passport and green card? I think there's no automatic about any of this. You have to go Separately. to where your name is. So at the bitter end, we'll talk about like, so now what? You got this little pink thing. Now what do you do with it? Okay. All right. Good questions. Thank you. Okay. So we were talking about. Number three. Okay. Right. And so then. Okay. So number four. Has your name ever been changed before under law? In North Carolina, you can change your name under this statute one time and one time only for your entire life. Well, except really you can. Okay, so, so you would change that it's been changed before, but both Megan and I have represented people who became an adult, they didn't like their name for whatever reason, and they changed it all within the same gender under the statute. More time goes out and they transition to a different gender and they want to change their name again. That's a constitutional issue. That kind of name change is no longer pro se either. If you've already changed your name once and you want to change it again, we can get it done for you. I've done it, but my petition is eight pages long and it quotes like Supreme Court cases and why it's unconstitutional. And then our clerk is like, heck yeah, that's unconstitutional. <laughs> she signs it. So that's also happened in, in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. But the clerk didn't sign it. It had to go in front of the judge. Mm -hmm. so, so it's happening in other counties, but with a little bit more intricacy. But um, So we can get it done if you check that you've done it before. So don't give up. But it's probably not pro se, OK? Daisy, does that include if someone changes their name because when they're married, which is the simple process, yeah. does that your count as your one time? <laughs> nope. When I talk about this statute, I'm not talking about marriage because marriage does not go through this statute. You get married, you take your marriage certificate down to the DMV, and you're like, I got married, changed my name. That's it. it. Doesn't change your birth certificate. This process changes your birth certificate. You can do that one time. And if, if you are in the unique circumstance of wanting to do it again, we can still do it, get it done. Okay, I got a question. So yes. if you have got married, you want to change your name, you can just show your marriage certificate and you can change your name. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you just take your marriage certificate to the yeah. DMV or Social Security yeah. and your name will be that. Mm -hmm. Your birth certificate remains undisturbed. Mm -hmm. And I won't use you as an example, mm -hmm. but a client of mine then gets divorced mm -hmm. and they take their divorce to certificate to the DMV and poof, they resume their birth certificate name. Mm -hmm. 
And so it's more fluid because mm -hmm. people get married three, four, five times. And also you have to do DM Social Security first and then DMV. And Social Security might got to match what you're going to put to DMV. Okay. Good advice. I see you shaking your head. There's some, some, some of this stuff other people know better than me. So that's why yeah. I look over there and know you. Okay, so that, so that sounds So my more. last name would, was going to stay the same. So if I just want to change my first and middle name, even with just my marriage certificate, I can do that. Nope. Okay. Now, so you want to marriage your marriage certificate just the last only name. is assuming the last name of your spouse. Of your spouse. Right. Yeah. And okay. so, so say, so my last name is Walton. My partner's last name is Thatch. Our children are Walton hyphen Thatch, Walton Thatch. The Walton Thatch brothers, you'll hear about their band in about 10 years. <laughs> so um, to get that hyphen, if I wanted to be, if I wanted to be Dizzy Thatch, I would just take my marriage certificate to the DMV. If I want to be Dizzy Walton Thatch, hyphen Walton Thatch, I have to go through this process. Got it. That hyphen, I think I was explaining to Fletch and Ivy, that hyphen is expensive and ornery <laughs> if I want to be hyphenated. Yeah. yeah. So, but so I don't I it's easier to take the last name. Yeah. yeah. But if you're wanting to change your name from, you know, Diane Walton to Daniel, this is the process you go through. You know, I could, no marriage is going to change Diane to Daniel. Yes. Is this process the same in Henderson County? Yep. Or I need to get one from the nope. courthouse? Yep. So this, this is county of Bond County. Yep. Okay. Just white it out. No, you need to put the county where you're filing it. But R say Buncombe, but that's the only change. Okay. Whoever says Buncombe, put in Henderson. So, quick question. Yeah. So you have to live in the county that you get to file, you have to file in the county that you live in? Yes, you do. Okay. Yep. Did you guys hear that? You got to file this in the county in which you reside. Um, this form, I see that it says that you should sign it, but not until you're in front of a notary. Which, yes. Zeke, which we have. is a notary, so don't sign it yet, but at the end of this, when your stuff's filled out, sign it in front of Zeke, we'll have your papers notarized. Yeah. Cool. Today. Yeah. Great. Mm, yeah. So, the, and there are other things, too, that we could possibly have signed as well. Yeah. In front of a notary. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so then look down at, um, so see number five, petitioner is a bona fide resident of and domiciled in the county of Buncombe. So just, you know, white it out and put in Henderson. Or type this up your own self. However you want to do it, I'm sure it'll be acceptable. Um, number six, petitioner does or does not have child support. Again, this gets back to fraud and avoiding responsibilities. Number seven, petitioner does or does not have judgments against them for money owed as evidenced by the limited title search printout that includes a judgment and a civil action checked attached here too. Okay, so what the heck does that mean and how do you get it? Um, this is a point where a lot of people hire a lawyer just for that. I charge 50 bucks to do this. I go to the courthouse and I do the title search. You can also go to the courthouse and do the title search and print it out and attach this. You would go to the clerk's office and say, I need to do title search. What, you're, what they are looking for is that, again, if it were my name change, that Diane Esther Walton has no liens against her. There's no IRS lien. There's no lien on my house because I didn't pay the plumber. I don't owe child support. I didn't get evicted 10 years ago and didn't pay my rent and my landlord, you know, did that. If any of those things are true, it's not an absolute bar. It's just the clerk wants an explanation. You could say, well, actually I have this payment plan and here, look, I'm doing it. But if it appears that you're avoiding something, the clerk, the clerk's going to have a hearing if you have a lien basically. Um, but, but when I write the letter, if something comes up, I explain it. For instance, what if your name is John Smith? John Smith has liens against him, okay? He does. But maybe that's not you. And so then we just, we, we attach what was printed out and say, you know, look, this is not us, and we explain why. If somebody has a criminal record um, for, well, I'm not even going to go there. Did you have a question? Yes. So when you're searching, is it searched by, don't you search by your social security number or just nope. by your name? Name. 
Okay. When, in Buckingham County, it's if you have any. Does this include uh, student loans? If you have a judgment against you, it's not that you owe people money. Okay. It's did somebody file a judgment against you? Okay. A judgment means that they've gone through this court process and they and you owe them money. Does that mean like if, if you have a debt <clears throat> to you that's been sent to a collection agency, is that a judgment against you? Nope. Not unless they've gone to the courthouse and sued you. Would you know that unless you went to the courthouse and found out that way? You might be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So that's kind of the quirky thing. Where's our list? Um, so I'm going to remember this thing that you guys will leave here with so you can refresh your memory. That'll be in here. It says a limited title search printout that includes a judgment and civil action check. If a lawyer does it for you, I title my letter a limited title opinion. And I, and I just write a letter to the clerk about what I did or did not find. Um, okay. They want, okay, so the SBI will tell you about criminal stuff. So if you have a criminal record, that's not a bar to this at all. It's, it's, they're going to want to know how your criminal record would be affected by the name change. For instance, if you're a registered sex offender and you're changing your name, they're probably not going to let you change your name. Now, what if you're a registered sex offender due to old bad laws because you were a gay man who had sex on the parkway and were arrested and charged with crimes against nature or something like that? There are workarounds for people in that position but that would no longer be a pro se name change. Um, okay. Okay, so I think we're on to the affidavits of good character. Okay, cool. So don't sign this paper yet until you meet with Zeke at the end of this session. Okay. Um, but the affidavit's a good character. Take one if you are kind of listening to this. Take two if you're filling it out and you're gonna go file your name change. So one if you're just like learning and referring. Take two if you're going to change your name and you're preparing your packet right now. No, it's you can do it yourself. You can go to the courthouse and um, ask. You're gonna ask, you're gonna need assistance. There's no way you can walk into the courthouse and do that on your own. I can barely do it. Does it cost money to do it? No, it doesn't. Okay. No, it doesn't. I just find their operating system. Z, mm. do you know the operating system? Allison is the expert on Okay. I just find their operating system to be a mess. Yeah, yeah the um yeah. doing the search at the Bucket Free Courthouse. Yeah. If you're facing the court's court right there, it's through a door on the left. And it's the old part of the building when you're standing there. So there's a door on the left, you go in, and there's usually a few uh, people in there on computers, and you just tell them, I need a panel search. You give them your name, they'll print it out, give it to you. <gasps> That's you so, so nice. Do yeah. it that way. Yeah. Don't, don't hire really, me. The <laughs> really the yeah. Great. That I've is walked, so awesome. I've and walked, like, 30 or 40 yeah. people what they're doing, is anybody here born before night? No. Was anybody here born in the 80s? Anyone? Okay, the computer there is older than you. <laughs> I'm not joking. And so that's like, I get bogged down in that computer. I find it so hard. So like, but those ladies will help a lawyer. So. Yeah, no, I, yeah. And it's it's, I'm willing to volunteer to go with people. I've okay. done it, like I said, I have done it. I've walked 30 or 40 people through the Boston County process. So. Yeah, yeah. Transmission, these folks are with Transmission. They're an incredible resource if y'all need help beyond this, this clinic with the rest of that process. Okay, so now this is the next requirement. This is called an affidavit of good character. 
You have to have two people do this. So you're going to fill out the headline. Remember, you don't worry about the numbers because the clerk is going to give that to you. You fill out the same heading. Wherever it says in the matter of the name change, it should look exactly the same on every single piece of paper. You're swearing that you're a resident of whatever county. Or sorry, the person who signs this is not you. This is a friend. They're swearing that they live in the county in which you file and that they're not related to you through blood or marriage and that they've known you for one years. It's okay if the funnel is not good. However many years they've known you. That they personally, personally know you to be a person of good character and that you have a reputation as a person of good character in standing in the community. So a person of bad character, let's not get bogged down in that. This is just somebody who's not um, hurting other people. How about that? And like we have a pretty, remember when I talked about minimum standards for parenting? We're gonna have minimum standards for character, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so um, the person who signs this, um, it has to be signed in front of a notary. So today, if you're here with someone who's not related to you by blood or marriage and has known you for one year or longer, you can have them sign this today. You can leave here with this sign. Remember, you need two of them. So that's the conversation you can have kind of at the end of this, like if you guys can sign each other's affidavits of good character. Um, otherwise, Get your friend, go to a bank, and have them sign it in front of a notary, okay? Um, any questions about this one? This might be the easiest form. I have a really bizarre question. Yeah, sure. Notary has to be from some county also? No, they need to be a North Carolina notary. Yeah. But other than that, it does not matter at all what county you're from. Okay. What's that? All right, so any, we only need one. Oh, I'm sorry. One person. I was going to point out one I did here. Is it two banks? One is sure you're two banks. Okay. The first one here to pull there. Okay. There's also um, like shipping, like UPS stores, FedEx stores. They also have notaries. So we need one person, two forms, or two two. People. You need two one form per friend. Okay. And so you have to file two of these. You have two okay. friends who are swearing okay. that you're good. And the and friends have be, to live in Buncombe. Your friends have to be a resident of Buncombe. Or whatever your county is. Can't be mommy. Because my all your mom would probably swear you're good. Hopefully, maybe not. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So it sounds like transmission is the the resource for kind of finishing this process. Like this is a good place to start. Um, How do we contact them? Do you have, um, do you have cards? Them? Yeah, I'll go grab some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, all right, so now we're on to the order. You prepare the order for the clerk. So, yeah. So, now North Carolina being the quirky place that it is, you have to have two orders, not one. One must be pink. One must be short and square. I'm not joking. <laughs> okay, so if you want to print this out online, you have to print it on pink paper. And these little dots come out, and it says, cut a long dotted line. Okay? I have no, no clue why. Ooh. Basically, I heard you say that I need to go get somebody that has pink paper. Right. that out for me. Yes, you can also, I brought this one because the clerk, well, it's hit or miss, but the clerk often has these, and it has the two white copies as well. Mm. So you have to bring them, and this is on the list. Yeah. Order so and certificate of name change. So can, can, copy so can we get that from the and clerk? And two white copies. What's that? So can we get a copy of that from the clerk then? Um, yeah, this one is out of date, so I can't give it to anyone. Right. But yeah, you can ask the clerk for this, or you can go online. All forms, this is an AOC form. 
This is not, the 28th Judicial District Bar did this out of a kindness to our community. These are forms a lawyer would normally prepare. This is a North Carolina state form. This is what North Carolina vital records requires. You can get this online. All North Carolina forms have numbers in the bottom left-hand corner. You go to the North Carolina state website. You need your AOC form, the administrative office of the court. And there's the number. That's where you would print out your pink piece of paper or get it from the clerk. Okay, enough of making fun of bureaucracy. Um, so this is the order that our clerk will sign here. Well, they sign that too, but this is the one that she'll kind of go over with a fine tooth comb. But you're the one who's going to fill it in for her. There's the glasses. So again, don't worry about the number. Make your caption. This is called the caption match. Um, don't fill in the date. Don't fill in filed by, let her figure out that. Um, Zeke, I just realized this might be because I'm a lawyer. Is our clerk wanting them to fill this out? Or is she just wanting it presented and she fills it out? Because I always fill it out for the clerk and she would be miffed at me if I didn't. But in a pro se case, you do fill it out. Okay, cool. Um, so look at number seven. Um, petitioner has averred, that means that you've sworn to tell the truth, that you have no outstanding tax or child support obligations. Or look, you can have that stuff and still get it. She just wants an explanation. You know, I was in prison for three years. I fell behind on my child support. I now have an arrearage that I pay on every month. She'll be like, fine, no problem. Okay. Yes. So one petitioner's true name. I'm guessing they mean current legal name. Yeah. Um, the court has reviewed the following evidence. So look at that evidence and make sure you've given it to her. But you do have a checklist in there. You see where it says a recent certified true copy of the birth certificate. Um, she may or may not check box nine, okay? That's up to her. If she wants a hearing, she'll call you in and let you know. A hearing in front of a clerk is at her office, at a table, and chairs. You're not in the courtroom. There's no bailiff. There's no audience. It's just at a table with her. That's it. Um, where it says sworn testimony, that just means you're not up on a witness stand. She's just either made you swear on the Bible to tell the truth, or you can affirm to tell the truth. Um, and then she signs it. So now your name change process in some ways is over. You now have the order in the pink form. And this is what you take to the, the social security office in the DMV. It's also sent, if you're born in North Carolina, to Raleigh, where they reissue your birth certificate. If you are from a, if you were born in a different state, then you are going to look at that state's vital records and mail them certified copies of these documents and meet their requirements for getting them this information. You're not going through any kind of additional name change process. You're just saying, hey, I changed my name, changed my birth certificate. Yes. Is there a special process for making a certified copy from the clerk? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, 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 you should ask the clerk for a certified copy. Can you get more than one? Yes. Do, do you have to pay yeah. for that? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. The, the women are really nice. Everybody I want to do, they gave me more than one for free. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I wouldn't count on that if you're in a different county. Yeah. <clears throat> that's worth asking. But you still want your your certified copies. If somebody will take a copy of a certified copy, give them that so that you just hang on to your certified copy. But you can always go, a name change is public record. It's going to be sitting on a shelf. 
and you can always go up there, pull a file, and ask for another certified copy of the cold letter. So, yes. So how many copies do you suggest we get that are certified? Well, maybe three. Does that? Do you think three is enough? Yeah, I would have asked for everybody three or two copies. Okay. Because not everybody keeps them. A lot of people just want to look at them, like things and pieces. Oh, okay. Well, okay. there's some like some ways you have to mail a certified copy mm -hmm. in for like a passport. And then when they send the new passport back, they, right. they send it back because you have to have those copies to mail away to okay. their like home uh, birth certificates. I send my mail away. All that, so I had probably I got probably four because I know I had to send a bunch away, but okay. I eventually get back. But, you know. <coughs> okay, cool. Um, eventually, you will have a new birth certificate that you have ordered through this process, um, and then you're off to the races. Yes. Are you raising your hand with a question or with the answer? Okay, great. The board of California, to, uh, you said that, yeah, I mean, we can talk. You said that it's, uh, no, I'm interested in the answer. There's, there's a, <laughs> oh, you're interested in the answer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what you're going to do is change your name first, and then you can send your name your name change order, um, a certified copy of that to California with a letter from your doctor saying that you're being treated. You don't have to go through any surgery, they just have a letter back to you. And they change your name and they send it back. It's also sent like a envelope, but that's an extra thing. Each little state is quirky and unique. And so that order sounds like that totally works for California. Don't take it to the bank if you were born in Utah or somewhere else. You have to kind of look at each state individually. Any other questions? Um, I had a question. It was kind of similar. Um, so I'm in the beginning stages of my transition, and mm -hmm. so I just wanted to go through the name change process and then later on change my gender marker. Okay. Is this the still the yeah. good process? Okay. Totally. Absolutely. Were you born in North Carolina? Uh, no, originally New York. Okay. But I've been here way too long. Okay. <laughs> it's not going to be a problem. I would say whatever, I, this, correct me if I'm wrong, but I just think you should do what you can do now and that you want to do now. And so I don't see any point in waiting to do things at the same time. Any other questions? Yes. I'm a dual resident. I have residents in Massachusetts and North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I'm exploring changing everything in Massachusetts mm -hmm. because it's a much simpler process. Mm -hmm. And then I, can I just transfer? Where were you born? Boston. I would do it in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't even, I would do it in Massachusetts. I wouldn't even think about doing it in North Carolina. If you have the ability to do it there, do it. Once you have it, it's good everywhere. It's not like your name is only changed in the state in which you changed it. It's so just I changed. Take that documentation to the DMV and. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? So I guess just fill out and then if you have something to be notarized, bring it over. But yeah, those two it. resources. Um, I know we probably won't keep everyone for the funding workshop after this, but yeah, if you have papers, you wanna go ahead and get notarized today. Zeke is the man with the plan. Also, the Campaign for Southern Equality has, uh, we're offering small need-based stipends to help cover these uh, fees. I forgot to talk about the fee. So we're going to talk about the fee real quick. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the fee waiver, and yeah. then um, there are applications for uh, to apply for up to seventy five dollars to assist with the fees just outside there. Um, which Colin does not that one. There's another one out there. Um, but if you are interested in that, just fill that out for us. That's the one, and give that to Colin or Sarah out in the hallway. Can I go fingerprints. Uh, we're not doing fingerprints, okay. Okay. but you have your card, so you're ready to go get them done. So I didn't talk about the filing fee. The filing fee is $120. This is a petition to sue as an indigent. Indigent means you don't have enough money 
to file something at the courthouse. North Carolina will waive the filing fee if you don't have enough money. So you would fill it out and you're swearing that you don't. You're like, if you have a job and you can afford it, then you just need to pay. But if you're getting food stamps, aid to families with dependent children, SSI, you, or other things, you can also hand write in here your circumstances. You can be fully employed, but be raising four children and you're broke. So you could write in here what your circumstance is. You know, I just lost my job, whatever it might be. And then you sign it in front of a notary. And the clerk doesn't have to sign this, but they almost always do. But you're swearing that it's true. Who would like it? I'll just send them around. So, was that it? That was it. I just All forgot right. to talk about that. So, so let's take, no, that's fine. Um, let's try to take 10 minutes, but as long as we need to get everybody's paperwork in line, that's how long we'll take. Those applications are just outside the door. Zeke is right here. If you need to see him to get stuff notarized, we'll try to take 10 and then we'll come right back here for a workshop on resources that are available for funding medical transition.